good evening and welcome to the fourth estate, Charles Mwangu Shampagi, and tonight we'll be discussing Do opinion polling impact actual elections or can political parties leverage opinion polls to be able to predict their own performance and use them to build? A new opinion poll was released early mid um, late this week by Research World International in collaboration with uh, NTV and Dr. Patrick Adikida was the lead researcher. Dr. Akida, you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you You've been a lot on TV over the last few days uh, with this opinion poll. Yes, it means that people are discussing the poll. People are discussing the poll, or you're trying to market the poll? Not really. Um, mm. It's also good that people know what the poll talks about. Okay. Yes. Making a return to this yeah. set after long absence, Angelo Izama. Angelo, very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. And also making a return into the studio. Charles Odongtho. Charles, very nice to have you. It's I, my I, pleasure, wanted, I wanted to, I'm happy to, be back. to sit like a <coughs> certain uh, king mm. on your set. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're way too late. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, missing in action tonight is uh, my colleague Chris Obore. Okay. He is engaged with uh, some other things and won't be able to join us tonight. I want to start from the reverse. Not from the researcher, because the researcher has been talking about his opinion poll for long. Charles Odongtho, do these opinion polls mean anything given the history of this country, this country's opinion polling and the outcome of uh, election results? I, I think now I'm realizing they do, they mean a lot because uh, initially, probably five years back, I would take them like any other academic work or intellectual property that someone you know going into research and then you bring out a result and you know we Africans are not good at reading so when Charles does an opinion poll then he gets out the results and we go into the discussion what are the percentages and the differences and all that but I notice now that the excitement that the uh, this week's result of, uh, of Research World International has created, it really means something. And, and you see even the parties. Um, I saw at Hotel Africana when Dr. Wakida with, and his team were releasing the official result. I saw their NRM represented. And then I saw the JEMA president himself was there. And I saw a number of um, political players, which means that they pay a lot of attention to these results and of course you can even follow from the commentaries that are following very you know um, excited people the NRM saying yes even Wakida who Wakida is a known supporter of, of, of General Muntu a known FDC um, person and for him to do this kind of you know uh, scientific work and release the fact that President Museveni is still leading by 55%. Um, NRM is happy and they say even our opponents can admit that we are still in the lead. Mm. Yes. So, and, and of course the other parties are complaining and saying, was it credible? The NRM is saying, no, this one just fell short of the 71 that New Vision did the other day. Mm. So I, I think it is still, I, I now let, believe let, that it's important. Okay. Let's first give some numbers. Um, uh, the opinion poll by Dr. Wakida gives uh, President Yerim Seven, if an election was held today, he would win by 55%. Yeah, true. And that poll is uh, plus or minus three. Yes. Meaning that in real terms, it even puts President Museveni in a precarious situation because mm -hmm. he can easily fall below the 50 plus 1% yeah. that is required for him to get an outright win. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, you have 82% uh, of the, sur the surveyed people mm -hmm. indicating they support the National Resistance Movement. Yes. Now, Dr. Akida did a clear distinction between NRM supporters mm -hmm. and non-NRM supporters. Yeah, true. Dr. BCJ indicates He's the second uh, highest ranked politician. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I also found interesting is, uh, I think it's coming in at 28%, Dr. Yes. Besseji, yes. in terms of popularity, if the election was held today, which is a significant growth in opinion polling from the last opinion poll, um, um, I think Wakida did, mm -hmm. which had put Besseji like six percentage points below. Mm -hmm. So he has registered some growth. New entrant on the opinion polling is Amama Mbabazi, mm -hmm. who's signing in with 13%. Yes, about 14 percent. 14 percent. You have also questions around internal party support. Mm -hmm. 
registration for the national ID. Mm -hmm. But what I found more interesting is the name recognition mm -hmm. of the six top politicians, seven top politicians mm -hmm. that were listed out. Mm -hmm. All of them are above 74 percent in terms of name recognition, name recognition with yeah. president Yerim seven coming in at 100 percent uh, dr kiza Besige coming in at uh, 90, 98 percent 96 percent yes uh, mama mbawa is 83 percent yeah. that is important but Angel, let me come to you mm. there's always a lot of criticism about opinion polling in this country because people think either the environment of fear among the researchers themselves or dishonest answers from the people who respond, the respondents, to an opinion poll, and therefore they dismiss opinion polls. When it comes to the actual election, you see the numbers. The best gauge, in my view, is not the election at presidential level. It is the performance of political parties at other levels, including uh, parliamentary, including uh, local council district chairpersons, uh, municipal councils, and the local council structure. Mm -hmm. Why do political parties continue to dismiss opinion polls and say these guys are just lying without doing extra things that would help them using the opinion poll? What do you think? Well, most political parties are uh, epically disorganized. They come alive during the election. In between elections, they have poor communication with their members. Um, especially about their programs, their desires, like where they want to take the country. Uh, there is no clarity, I think, for any single political party about where their ideological position lies. And their supporters do not, uh, after an election, go ahead and recruit members based upon uh, that ideology. Uh, what you have instead um, is really a, a, a fight in the kind of institutional advantages of the two main political parties. Mm. The NRM performs really well. Um, actually, th this current uh, opinion poll, apart from you know their members uh, indicating the you know higher higher numbers, mm. if you look at how they uh, take out the presidents, if you look at how the ruling party performed in municipal elections, they really scored much higher. They have over 70 percent of both uh, LC3 and LC5 uh, seats, uh, which is, by the way, higher than the president's own average in the last election. Mm. They, of course, have uh, dominance in parliament. And all of those things require a certain level of organization at the grassroots. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's that which I think are the core numbers you reflect, because the poll is really about perception at the time. Mm. And you know, if you think about the architecture that uh, is available for the parties, FDC has the next best uh, organization. And I did, I was, I was a participant in a research that looked at how political parties are uh, organized, uh, their secretariats, with their relationship with their <coughs> members. In fact, all the parties do really badly. But the NRM has got the incumbent advantage and it's fused with certain structures at the district. And I think that is what you see reflected in the poll. What, what is your view, do you think, accounts for what I would call a poor performance of uh, President Yerim Seven? At 55 percent, that's uh, pretty, pretty low. Uh, it, it's not a place that an incumbent would want to be in at uh, this time of an electoral year. Yes, well, you see, I think that the interests of uh, the voters are, that are, are much more at a local level. Uh, if you look at the way voters uh, behave uh, on all elections, they are most active at the, when they vote for LC5 and when they vote for MP. Um, some numbers I, I myself have put out there indicate, for example, if you look at the NRM primaries in the, in the last election, um, from their own numbers, about 6.2 million people voted in that poll, but only 5.4 million people cast a vote for the president in the general election. Mm. How is it that more people voted in one election and, and they the didn't turn said, yeah. Mm. And we have also reported that voter turnout is heavily uh, suppressed. Um, in fact, it's been falling consistently. Um, it appears to me also, if you add to that, the number that, you know, um, incumbent MPs lose with very high percentages, probably over 70% in the next election, 
it suggests to me that voters feel that they have power at the local level and feel that at the national level, when you look at the presidential polls, things are more or less the same. In fact, what Dr. Wakita's poll has shown is really business as usual. Maybe, Wakita, Charles, yes. maybe be just hmm. a minute when, before you go to Dr. Wakida, probably something that is also interesting to add to what Angela said. Um, it's also important to look at, I think, the first three um, variables that came out as some of the issues that affect people in this country. Poverty, one of them, the highest actually was the issue of poverty, mm -hmm. that people are really poor and it uh, comes out at I think 49% or 48 and then the issue of you know theft, corruption in government which came at about I think 41% mm -hmm. as and, and then the whole issue of continuity as one of the things for which people think that President Museveni should be the preferred candidate. Mm -hmm. Now if you if you look at continuity you know in a reverse manner it can be one of those things on top of the issue of poverty and corruption which are linked you can you can really place them at the doorstep of the of the, of the government, government of mm. the incumbent and uh, continuity if you look at it the backside of it is that people want change and 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 when a government has stayed in power for 30 years i mean five months shy of 30 okay. you know now so it is something that you can also relate to the reasons why mm. is <coughs> doing Dr. That yes. law. Let, let me put a very uh, broad question to you looking at the context in which you decided to conduct this opinion poll and the results that you got what do those results say about the elections and people's perceptions in a general interpretation of the poll? I think, uh, let me first look at the the population that we polled. You see, we polled 2,320 people. 830 actually, in your report. Those are randomly selected people. I had people say that, oh, these guys went and only polled NRM. I want to correct that impression. That we, we did not predetermine who you're going to who we are going to, to poll. Mm. We also polled seventy eight percent rural people. They were villagers, only twenty two percent what urban. do you define as rural? You see the there are demarcations that are done by UBOS. UBOS is the only organization in Uganda that can determine what is rural and what is urban. Mm -hmm. They have certain standards that they use. And up to now, between 22 and 24 percent of our population is regarded as urban. The rest is, is, rural. is rural. Then we also polled um, close to about 60 percent of people who have never gone to secondary school. It means they either they have never gone to school or they have only done up to primary seven, about 60%. And only 13% of the people we polled are educated people. Educated means that they have a certain level of certification, and that is the demographic distribution of our population. Does that explain why the elites are dismissing your poll? Or dismiss opinion polls generally? Uh, you see, I. I wouldn't say that they, they are dismissing or they are not dismissing. A poll is, is dependent on how you interpret it, mm. to understand it. When we asked people whether they are well off economically, for example, I want first to dwell about that. Majority of them say, we are not well off, we are actually poor, basically poor people. So that's the context under which our voters live. They are poor. They are not educated, they live in rural areas. The few elites that live in the urban centers, if you look at them again and you ask them, did you vote in the previous election? You have 13% of people who have completed university. And you have about 63% of those saying we did not vote. So ideally, the decision on who becomes a president in this country is not the work of the educated people. It is still the work of the rural people. One, they beat them by the majority, and therefore there are very many. Mm -hmm. But most importantly is that we are talking about a rural person whose 
expectations are so low that you don't need to do a lot to satisfy a rural person. You must do a lot to satisfy uh, the likes of Islam and, and, and Charles Dongoto. In countries like Europe, uh, where you have opinion polls shaping the, the race, the expectations of those people to their leaders is so high. Everybody drives, so they expect the roads to be good. Everybody goes to the public health oh, maybe most people. Well, let me tell you in the UK, mm -hmm. on average, a home has got four cars. Mm -hmm. In the UK, Britain, on average, a home has a, a car. You have everybody using a, a national health service in the UK. So, you know, everybody wants the child to go to school because the only means of getting, uh, you know, livelihood. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and therefore, they become an issue if the, yeah, government, the government is not catering for them. Mm -hmm. Here, it is not the case. I was discussing with you that how many people in this country today use the public health facility, for example, uh, the hospitals that we are talking about? If you ask somebody about the health facility, it will tell you, uh, meaning the clinic, mm. the drug shop, or the pharmacy. Mm. They are not necessarily talking about the public health facility. So when you come up with an issue and say the government is not delivering health services, you will actually be shooting over and above the population's expectation. When you talk about the roads, so, so it's about low expectations. Than it's, that. it's 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 basically the, the kind of people. I was reading Paul Kuria's book, and Paul Kuria is very clear that people begin to vote issues as they go higher in their education and they move away from the, the rural areas to start to live in the urban areas. Now, this poll only tells us one thing, that the more you have been in power, the more you are likely to be known. That is one. Mm. And that the more they know you, the more they are likely to make choices around you. Now, you have, these are the leaders uh, who want to base the Professor Barrier and uh, John Patrick Amam and Babas. They haven't actually gone around the population. If you asked people, he said, you know, Mont, what do you know about him? What does he stand for? Probably people won't know. Mm. And, and therefore, people are not able to make concrete decisions of whether to vote that person or not, yeah. because he hasn't exposed what he stands for okay. to them. I'm afraid I'm going to cut you there. We need to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll be broadening this discussion. This was also the week when uh, the Constitutional Amendment Bill, uh, last week actually, was uh, finally passed uh, with a very powerful um, minority report, which became controversial and developed contradictions right on the floor of Parliament, with uh, Shadow Attorney General Abdul Katun saying it's okay to defer some of these uh, critical amendments that deal with electoral legislation to the next parliament. We'll pick that up after short break. You're still watching The Fourth Estate and we're discussing can political parties leverage opinion polls in this country? What do they mean? How do they connect with them? We realize uh, from uh, Patrick's uh, explanation that uh, majority of the people are not actually connected. Very low expectations. After Charles, after uh, almost 50, how many years of independence? 52, 53, 52, 53 52, now. Yes, we're going to 53 years of independence, almost 30 years of um, fundamental change. Expectations are still that low, and we cannot connect governance with uh, our livelihoods. Um, I, I, let, me, let me take it from what I know. That uh, let's, let's not read too much into um, some of the um, some of the things that have come out of this outside you know looking at the, the true lifestyle that people are living um, if you move in the countryside and I know many of us here have done um, there is real poverty out there people um, in some places when the rains have not returned um, people cannot even have a decent one meal but when the rains uh, have, have come back people at least can 
you know, can have some greens or some uh, beans around the homestead and in their compound, in their gardens to eat, you know, or even afford two meals, live alone, three meals as it is, you know, these things of World Bank describing what is, you know, a good livelihood to have. Um, which, which for me tells me something, you know, you talked earlier before we went into the break about the precarious situation that this poll puts President Museveni mm -hmm. in as an incumbent and, and something that I got to hear from the camp of Mbabazi at, at a credible level is that they were actually happy with the poll, mm -hmm. the Mbabazi camp, um, when they heard that assuming the uh, Wakida poll is very credible, is legitimate, that they can actually reverse the difference of five and bring President Museveni back. You know, below 50 below plus 50, one. Please, mm. 50 percent plus one vote, which is what is needed mm. to sail to State House without a, a, a rerun. The reason they are saying that is because pres um, the former Prime Minister, if he's going to run, has not yet visited a district to start campaigning. That's one. But two, that it means that if you consider, if you compare that 55% to what, to the 100% across all questions asked, all issues polled, because President Museveni is covered 100% throughout, uh, including the name recognition and the preference. Now, if you take that and you compare to the overall um, you know, perception that if it was the elections were held today, it would get 55. The Mbabazi camp, you know, from the report I got this week, that they can actually reverse that if they start moving and telling the truth of where the blame for corruption, you know, should be laid, where the blame for the poverty, where the blame for the low level of education, where the blame for, you know, this chronic lack of or inadequate, you know, um, in, inadequate provision of, of health care, because I have always, and I think we have discussed this, Charles, um, I, I last, sometime last year I visited um, um, Chenjojo, mm -hmm. I visited a place here in near Palisa, there is Budaka, I, that's the district, I visited, of course, Nebi, and I was doing uh, working, of course, in, on my journalism work. And these districts that I'm mentioning don't even have a district doctor. I mean, a doctor in the, at the district hospital. Now, for, for, for Nebi, for example, if someone is, is very sick, the person will have to be rushed, if they need a doctor, they have to be rushed to Arua, which is 76 kilometers, or to Pakwach, which is a health center for where there is a doctor. By that time, someone probably will... will, will but what, what is your point, now, Charles? The thing is, People relate this to the lack of, you know, proper provision of health service and the things that are supposed to come with that provision. And you think they blame the government? And yes, of course, of course. Now, mm. they probably, right now, you and I know that that is supposed to be government to, to provide. But the ordinary person does not know. No, and, the, and the, the poll suggests yes. otherwise, actually. Sure. Yeah, the, 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 the poll suggests that they may not even care. I mean, they know what's important, but yeah. in, in, in Dr. Wakeda, from his analysis, if in fact people do blame the government and they associate the government with certain leading politicians, do they, in your view, have uh, sufficient knowledge that when they cast the ballot, it is these very same issues that are translated into their uh, poll behavior? Not really. Not really. If you look at the the, the poll, there is no direct relationship between poverty and the number of votes mm. people vote. Well, 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 the well, the poorer well, the population, the, the more likely it is that they are going to vote the government. So actually, the, 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 Dr. Wakida, that is one thing what, what, I actually what, what wanted to ask Dr. Wakida, Wakida yeah. that kind of contradiction. Yes, what that explains that kind of contradiction? You see, it, 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 when people are poor, it's easy for you to manipulate, to manipulate them as a politician. When people attain a certain level of education and a certain level of wealth and they move to a certain level of life, they become more informed. One, they, they have television so they have access to information that alerts them of their, of their predicament. Now, if you went to the village today, you will find very comfortable poor people 
on one side he has a blue slipper, mm. on the other side he has a red slipper, but he's very comfortable and he will tell you, we are fine, we are okay. That is not because they don't want to be well off, but they have no experience of being well off. They, they have lived that kind of life. And the expectations of and the expectations of, of leadership. When you talk about leadership, when you talk about, for example, taxes, you are saying you are paying high taxes, and the man will ask you, "What kind of tax am I paying? I haven't paid any tax." Mm. And and you see, authoritarian regimes understand that they will come and remove the direct taxes on the on the peasants no. and leave an indirect taxes for which they will never recognize. Uh, Doctor Wakita, yes. help us understand this. What then brings Museveni from a name recognition of 100% mm. from all that support for the NRM party, mm. as your poll found, yes. to a 55% preference level if the election were held today? Yeah, but you see, the, 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 the greater number of population that is moving to urban centers, if you look at Kampala's uh, rating of Mr. Seven, is the lowest. And as you move, you move to urban centers, it's the lowest. Now, with this border border all coming from the villages, they have started to take back the information. But in areas where they are typically uh, rural, you find a different picture. Angela. And I actually wanted to, uh, because the reason why I had interjected in his uh, line of reasoning is because he's trying to make the argument that the, the camp of the former right honorable prime minister imagines that they can build on what is actual discontent but that analysis of course is elitist as yeah. the poll shows mm -hmm. True. it has no bearing on what um, it, uh, uh, how the vote will actually turn out yeah secondly even if it were true then what the prime minister's camp would require is the architecture to convert what appears as discontent into actual votes, which, from what uh, uh, he has just said, is a gigantic task. Yeah, yeah. In fact, what this poll shows, and I did, what I take away is the so-called name recognition. Mm. This is a poll that shows that Ugandans have got real access to the media. Yeah. You see, it's, it's the media that is cultivating mm. the perceptions out there. Mm. You know, and I was not actually surprised that given the torrent of media coverage for almost eight months of uh, Prime Minister Mbabazi that he would register on the poll. Mm. In fact, I remember um, while at the Monitor, we did a poll that showed, if you remember, that Dr. Zababutur would be a good choice for president. <laughs> to replace president I remember it was, uh, yeah. I think, about 82 percent, and yeah. we couldn't believe it yeah. because he was an outlier, one person ahead of everyone else. Was but that the one of 2010? And you know why? No, because I, I remember yeah. our boss. Uh, I think 2009, 2010. Yeah, I remember my, our boss yeah. at the time was Conrad Nkutu, who, in the half and a puff, actually had decided maybe we should just dismiss the whole poll. But I, but my explanation to him at the time, and to my colleagues was, look, Dr. Buturo was on the radio, was on the TV, was on the, in the papers. At the time, actually, critical time, this is when the Northern War was uh, was generating all the headlines, and he spoke for the government. And in the perception of people who were consuming this, this must be a guy who was, you know, uh, a, a credible candidate. Mm. What, what I would imagine uh, lies in the face of uh, anyone who wants to challenge the, the campaign. And that also explains, by the way, the president's falling numbers. Because other actors have been introduced to the yes. public debate, mm. including Honorable Babazi. So that is really what the poll shows. I think that there's going to be a real battle in the final uh, uh, stretch of the election for the psychology of the voter. Yeah. When, when you look at the numbers of a preferred presidential candidate, a, a preferred candidate for the pre uh, I mean, who can win the president, mm -hmm. you, when you knock off uh, President Museveni, Kiza Besije, mm -hmm. Amama Mbabazi, mm -hmm. by the time you arrive at the others, they have completely disappeared. Yes, true. Yes. They have taken all the percentage yes, points. Everything has gone between those three <laughs> candidates. Does this mean, one, is it a three-horse race? If we can use that expression. But number two, we're discussing Museveni, Amama Mbawazi, and what is including the other actors, uh, Kiza Besije and, uh, who is actually and Mugisha Mundu, two. Yes, who are actually in the running for this thing mm -hmm. at the moment. How do they fit into the whole equation, and what does 
uh, what do these results mean for them? How can they leverage? I, I think, first of all, by the way, those who dismiss the poll are not very serious people. You know, Uganda is like an obese uh, patient who gets a report from their doctor saying, by the way, these are multiple things that <laughs> affect you. Mm? Mm. Uh, we may recommend some lifestyle changes. <laughs> And you say, ah, no, I feel healthy. I you know, right? <laughs> it's, like a, it's a good deal. <laughs> so you take those category of people and put them aside. For the contenders who have, because somebody only has the election to lose, he's a front <coughs> uh, If you're Dr. Besije, if you're Onu Mbabazi, if you're Mugisha Montu, some of those already have got infrastructure on the ground. They really need to do something spectacular to capture the imagination of Ugandans, because I think what is what is that spectacular thing? What can it, someone it, do? Messi has been has been at the game for three election cycles. Mm. Mm. What can he do? In a chance. Yes. If you wanted my answer, mm. uh, it would be to the impossible task. By the way, <laughs> is to communicate to voters that look, your government and other governments in Africa constantly look at voting and and governance as if there were economists studying the market. Mm. You know, African politicians treat, you know, the gov governance as the market, mm -hmm. not as society. Mm -hmm. You need someone there who says, look, we want to change the way society works, and this is how we're going to do it. Okay. <coughs> Just before you come in, Doctor, can, can, can I have Charles put a question to yes. you so that we can, he can come in? No, mm -hmm. I actually wanted, I was adding to what the, the, you asked the question, what the candidates should do. Um, I think there are three aims that are very important to win an election, and that's money, um, there is the, machin the, the, the machinery, and then there is the message. Now, all yeah, what you're saying is Coca-Cola can win an election. Who? Coca-Cola can win an election. <laughs> yes, the money is there, but but do they have the machinery? The machinery um, uh, distributors everywhere in the country. Yes. They distribute the machinery. Yes. N not, and necessarily, they have good not necessarily. I'm talking politically. I'm talking politically. And uh, but what I look at from the perspective of President Museveni is that he has all those three, and he can use all those three effectively. He has the machinery. He is an incumbent, and our laws allow him to use that incumbency up to the end. He has the money because he is the chief executive officer, and as we saw in the last election, he can get money as he wishes, and he has people who expect to do business in the government, and they will definitely associate with him, support him. Then, of course, the messaging, if you have the money, you can you know, distribute these messages effectively across all media networks. Now, these are the two that we're talking about. Dr. Besige, who comes number two, and, mm. and, and Babazi, they can have powerful messages of talking about these issues that people are talking about, the issue of poverty, and saying that this is the work of a sitting government, they should do this and this, never mind whether it is lies or they, you know. Where does the third now, factor the third, lie? the third factor of machinery is where I see their limitation, because mm. I don't think they can leverage you know the state machinery of course they cannot and that is going to deny them so for me i think that like uh, angelo says it's a gigantic you know um attempt that they they are going to have to put up but i still think that 55 percent even can can if he goes out as an individual and campaigns on the strength of his individual merit mm. and not so much like you know the party he can mm. only use the party as a follow-up you if, know if, capital if in my view. The, 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 the three mm. that he talked about the the machinery mm. no actually the two the machinery mm. and the money yes let's take a break doctor will pick it up with you after a short commercial break and we'll need to broaden this discussion to also look at uh, the gerrymandering the creation of uh, these new uh, elective areas uh, constituencies without Electoral reform legislation will be right back. Welcome back to this last segment of the fourth estate. Dr. Kide, let me just come to a strike question. Do you read a level of dishonesty when a certain section of political actors dismiss your poll? Yes. Or do they have some validation to say that uh, as a research firm, sometimes you, uh, you, you, your hands are tied by a lot of um, a, a, a lot of um, bottlenecks, including you need to get approval from the National Council for uh, Science and Technology, which does re which approves uh, research, that you have to produce this opinion poll in a context 
where there is a fear factor, where there is intimidation, where if you came out with the results that don't agree with the establishment, that you would actually fail to, you, you wouldn't uh, release you that. Know, that, you, that know, you know, work. Charles, um, true, there are fear, but I don't think that those fears substantially effect, uh, affect the, the, the results of these polls. Why, why do you think so? I, one thing I've noticed about Ugandans is that they are free talkers. They say their mind. Mm -hmm. and, and when you consistently look at their responses, because a poll is only dangerous if you only ask one question. But in a poll like this where we have about 60 to 70 questions, you are able to see whether at one point a respondent was Lying not on. honest. Mm -hmm. When we asked a question, and, and this is the most critical question within this poll, party membership, we asked, are you a member of a political party? 61% of Ugandans say they belong to political parties. We followed them up, we said, which party do you belong to? And you have 82% of the 61, which is 50.2% saying we belong to NRM. We therefore started to look at those individuals who said they belong to NRM versus those who said they don't belong to NRM. And you are therefore able to see that quite a big number, about 10% to 11% of the the 50.2 percent that say they belong to NRM are the same people who are saying we want change now. Mm. They're the same people that we want change within the party. Then we followed them to see who are these people? Are they part of these guys who are following Mbavazi? A great number of them are actually the ones who are saying who are voting Mbavazi. Mm. We went further and we said, okay, so Mbavazi, assuming Mbavazi comes out of the party and he stands as independent. Again, we follow them. About 9% of those guys still are the same saying, yes, we'll be with him as an independent candidate. Now, are they honest? In my view, they are honest. You, you can see the consistency of their response across. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the FDCs and you ask them, have you voted before? And you have a greater number of them who say yes, but again, a bigger number of them are saying this is our First time, first time vote. So you go and look at the, the FDC rating by age group. And, and then you look at these guys who are saying it's our first time to vote. You are again able to see that those are the individuals. Data should never be looked at you know, in, 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 in a wall. Data must be aggregated. You must be able to have one question that feeds it to the other. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one question. I saw a new vision, and I want, I want somebody to tell me whether that's professional of, of reporting. They said 82% of, of Ugandans support any RM. Mm -hmm. But inside that, they said 82% of those who belong to political parties support any RM. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> whether that is ethical to the writer, the person who produced that, or not, is the question I've been... He's reading your opinion poll. That's a slide in your... Was that one of, from your he, poll? It was a slide in your poll. Our poll was very clear <laughs> that 82% of 61. Yes. And any, any scientific writer would have been able to distinguish between that mm. and would have not said... So it was not 82% of 2,320. No, no, no. It's 82% of the 61. the 61, 61 being those who say they belong to political, belong party. political mm. party. Now, if you do that mathematically, say, what is 82% of 61? Mm. You will get 50.2%. Mm. And I would have expected the writer to be able to, to do that. To so say actually 52% of the... 50.2, not 52, 50.2% mm -hmm. mm. say they, they belong to any other. But you see, that is one of the problems. The other problem is, why is it that Ugandans today are not joining political parties? The same poll I conducted in 2010, about June July, 71% of the membership of political parties were any other. Mm. Today you have 
61% of the population saying we don't associate with any political party. You have the FDC membership reducing. Mm. To me, that is the question that w everybody. What explains that? I think the the challenge is that parties have not gone out to recruit. Mm. If I go back to look at FDC, they are selling their membership, card. membership cards. Any of them is giving a free membership card. In fact, in in most places where uh, my interviewers went, they. They reported the verbatim. Said uh, some people actually produced the membership card as an ID. So this is my ID. Mm, sure. You know, when mm. you ask, are you a registered member? Uh, did you register for an ID? People produced those as, as mm. an ID. It, it, and, so, and someone called into a show I hosted Monday yeah. with uh, Chairman Chigundu yeah. from, I think, Kamwenge, and was asking the question if someone who did not register in the yellow book would be eligible to vote. To vote. Yeah, and uh, the yellow book was introduced towards the end of the first phase, the mass phase, uh, the, 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 the mass recruitment of the NSIS last year. Mm. So people linked registration yeah. to belong to the NRM yeah. with registration to belong to get into the national database for NSIS national information security yeah. system. But but what's very critical is that parties should be able to go out there and recruit membership, and I think NRM has done. A greater deal of recruitment of the membership mm. and these are the opposition parties should be able to see in this poll and say we have not recruited okay. just, just, just one question before i move to the gentleman yeah. as we wind up the show you did not survey response to the electoral environment did you in this poll electoral environment uh, you see what we provide today is a baseline information we are going to be tracking the same people mm -hmm. to see whether those people have changed their perception and opinions, or they are still within there. And that is how polls are conducted in Europe. Okay. That you have a certain panel of respondents who you can follow up to see how they are performing. My, my, my question is, you went out in the field at a time when uh, there was a discussion and debate around uh, um, electoral reform. Yes. There had been, uh, Sedu had produced model bills. The free and fair elections campaign had been running. There was a citizens compact. There was discussion around what you need to have an environment that can allow for free and fair elections in the country. Is this a factor that concerns Ugandans? No, uh, you see, when we ask people, will you be voting? Uh, close to 94% said, yes, we'll be voting. But we all know, we also asked, why would you not vote? And an and, and electoral process mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. number one. You saw and, that. And, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's so, very uh, critical. So, the process leading to election is very critical in, in determining whether an individual leaves his house to go and vote or mm -hmm. not. Yeah. It is less of the politicians themselves, but the process that delivers people to the that delivers them. Yeah. Angelo, I, I need to take on this. Um, you, you have all this discussion. It's hanging in the air if you haven't discussed the fundamentals, which is, in my view, that one, people feel connected to their governance, to the way they are governed. And people should ideally feel connected to the process that delivers them there. But that discussion seems to be absent. Yeah, well, I, I was saying the <clears throat> during the break, if you pose the question, should Coca-Cola win an election? <laughs> it, it, it gives you a sense of what, what, uh, what uh, politics that we are dealing with. Because yes. A corporation like that ought not win an election mm. because elections are seri serious business. Yes, mm -hmm. it's about managing society. Yes, mm -hmm. and what our politicians have failed to do is connect the conditions of their voters to this very sense that you know we are there to reorganize society. And I think that the withdrawal of voters or the indifference uh, or even the low voter turnout is a function of voters sensing that politicians are not really about governance at the end of the day. You hear things like, um, actually my, my father George Zama is visiting and he, he told me, you know when politicians come these days to the village, we tell them, oh no, 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 please spare us the, the, the fine sounding, sounding language, just give us what you came to give us, <laughs> because, <laughs> because we know that's what it's about, mm. the so-called what we give you to vote wisely. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 that's what politics has been reduced to. Charles, yes. the elite are the most absent. 
You, Angelo, I, Dr. I, not, I don't even, I haven't even registered for yes. a national I, I, ID. I, 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 I have, I have I registered. And, uh, I'm registered. I, and I think... And I think I should vote. I have not voted in the last two elections, but I think this time I should vote. I have voted in every election that we have held since I became eligible to vote. And uh, I received a phone call from NSIS Secretariat telling me my ID is in Kitgo because I registered in Kitgo. I heard that complaint. And I have gone uh, online to check. But, but I'm actually registered. But will you be able to be in Toro when you are supposed to be working here? And that's what made me not vote, among other reasons. I, I, I'll, 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 make an effort. I'll make an effort to vote because the last election I voted from here in, yeah. in Nakawa. You're you like a soldier. Now, um, Charles, yeah. the people trapped in a rat race mm -hmm. is you and I. The people who are helping those people with low expectations, because the low expectations are not towards government, but they call you from uh, uh, Parombo. Mm -hmm. And ask you, Charles, you know airtime, you know now someone has gone to the hospital, we need to be able to get them out. And you're sending them mobile money. And we are the most absent from the discussion. What explains mm -hmm. that? <laughs> First of all, there is a joke someone told me last week that, you see, it's not good to be trapped in a rat race because at the end of it all, even when you win, you're still a rat and it's not a good race. Mm. Uh, the <laughs> cat will eat you. <laughs> cat will eat you. <laughs> you're still good for the, ra for the cat. Um, it, it is a big problem. And, and like you, 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 you hear from doctor that 78% uh, of the people polled are people who are illiterate and uneducated. Um, but, you know, it speaks to a number of things that it's therefore possible to for them to be um, you know because they are vulnerable so they can be exploited and their expectations are low as we said they only ask for for, for they ask for sugar they ask for salt they ask for soap and they're they not asking they for, for, for social mm -hmm. service as they and I can tell you that in, in, in my place, there was one time I saw, you know, old old women who are supposed to vote being given 500 shillings, the coin, mm. the copper coin, that they're supposed to then expect it. Someone told me a story of uh, when they went to the bank in Bushenyi somewhere, yeah. and uh, there were no coins because all the coins sure. had been removed and the lower denomination. And 1,000 shillings, 1,000 shillings, 2,000 is actually on, at, you know, on a hyper, you know, when during mm -hmm. these elections, because it, especially when it is new, and people admire that. Now, the thing is, I think we need to start speaking to the so-called middle class. And like Angelo says, politics is a serious matter. And if you, if you leave this matter to the so-called uneducated, I'm not saying that we should disenfranchise them. They must vote because mm. the law says so. But they should be, leadership is about, you know, provide, sensitizing the people who, who know less those who know better can sensitize those who know less so that then you know a good decision is taken for the better of this country and my, and my question to you and was yeah. why are us detached from this process i think so many reasons um one of them is what came out of the poll the the distrust the, the lack of trust in the institution that delivers the election. And you see, these polls are about perception. So we need to take them seriously and, and reflect on those perceptions. Because if the people think that, that that electoral commission is biased, that it is partisan, that you, it doesn't matter how far true or how how far wrong that perception is. It is a perception, and perceptions drive politics. That's what people must begin to know. Those of us who are seated in this kind of, you know, a privileged position in a way, that you are hard the other side, we should be able to lead by example. That, yes, I am registered to vote in February for all the leaders who will lead me. Angelo, are you registered? That should be the starting point. So that then, when you go to these people and you say, when you go to Toro and you say, I am registered, let's go and vote. The people can take that message. And so for me, one of the things that came out very you know, strong in that poll is the fact that people think that the, the election will not be free and fair because yes. Chigundu and his team are not that credible. That mm. is an indictment. Yes, you're holding forth. Yes. Mm. I'm afraid, gentlemen, our time is out. We need to get out of here. I thought yes. I should give one idea to sure. politicians. Go ahead. Mm. Talking about Coca-Cola. Last year, I saw that there were name tags on the Coca-Cola bottles. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think a brilliant politician would just put one name tag there. Find a, a, a soft drink company <laughs> that can put Urim yeah. 70 on the on the bottle mm -hmm. and distribute it countrywide. I think that would help your you. You, you might thank the business. I think the critical thing is 
how do people go into an election for which they do, they, they do not trust the institution that conduct the, the elections? Let me tell you, there are three major institutions that manage election. The judiciary, the police, police and the, the electoral, electoral commission. commission. True. None of them in this poll is scored above 50%. True. That means that they are not trusted. That's, that's very, very critical. The other thing is the confusing messages that come in the process of election. The Electoral Commission says you must have an ID in order for you to, to vote. vote. Now they are saying you can actually vote even if you don't have a card. No, actually it was the Minister of Internal Affairs yes. saying you need your ID to vote. order to vote. The Electoral Commission was saying you don't need your ID to vote. Now, and then Charles, that's very critical. Different when, when, we looked, when we looked through the, the data on an acquisition of ID, we found out that Northern Uganda is about 70%, Kampala about 65%, but Eastern and Western below 20%. Mm. Wow. They have not received their card. Now, if I met the, the guys who are issuing the ident cards, I would be asking, what happened? Okay. In this area. Uh, Pamela is watching this show and I think she'll tell us. Uh, it, because the last time she, 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 she asked that we should have given her an opportunity to come in here and talk about the national ID. We'll give you an opportunity, Pamela, at some uh, stage. I mean, Pamela Nkunda, who is uh, the yes, spokesperson of the, the Minister of Internal Affairs and um, the project of NSIS. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we unfortunately are unable to discuss now is the confusing messages also from especially members of the opposition political yes. parties. At one, that said that at one time they are saying, we are not going to participate in this election without electoral reform. And then at another time saying, we can overhaul the process. So that level yeah. of confusion, yeah. I that's, think, that's in a way. A, that's a very serious thing. Our time is out, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. So thank you very much, Dr. Wakita. Thank you, Charles. Thank you very much, Angelo. Thank you, Very Charles. nice to have you back mm -hmm. here. And thank you very much, Charles Odongtho. Thank you, Charles. Uh, my name is Tech. Thank you very much to you all, our viewers, for joining us tonight. Um, I, I, I keep joking with a few people who say we're watching outside there and they told them that if I wave it means I'm waving to you, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think I know themselves. So you need to wave always. I'm waving and I think I know themselves <laughs> those are talk too. Have a good night.